parable. A glass of milk. A young man, who was paying for his medical studies by working as a street vendor of small necessities, felt extremely hungry one day, but had not a penny for lunch. He decided to overcome his shame and ask for something to eat at the next door he knocked on. However, he lost his nerve when a young, beautiful woman opened the door. Instead of food, he asked for a glass of water. Sensing something, she brought him a glass of milk. He drank it, feeling very embarrassed, and then asked, How much do I owe you? You don't owe me anything, the girl replied. My mother taught us never to accept payment for helping someone in need. Then I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Many years later, that girl, now a grown woman, fell seriously ill. The local doctors were concerned about her health and sent her to a hospital in a big city, precisely where the young man, now a renowned doctor, was practicing. When he received the woman's medical record and saw her name and the name of the town where he had studied, he immediately went to see the patient and recognized her at once. He returned to his office, studied the case, and did everything he could to save the patient's life. The fight was long, but the woman recovered. In turn, the woman was very worried about the cost of her hospital stay. The amount was expected to be astronomical for her. When she was discharged, she was presented with the bill. She opened it fearfully, expecting to see a long line of numbers. The bill read, Paid in full with one glass of milk, signed Dr. So-and-so. Moral, kindness returns. A herable, the freedom of choice, not to respond. There lived a wise man, everyone loved him. But as always, there was a young man who wanted to test his wisdom. He persuaded his friends to teach the old man a lesson. The sage was sitting near his house, pondering something. Suddenly, young men approached and started taunting and even insulting the man, trying to provoke him. The old man listened to them very calmly. Because of this calmness, they started feeling uneasy. An awkward feeling arose. They were insulting the man, and he was listening to their words as if they were music. Something was wrong. One of them turned to the old man. What's the matter? Don't you understand what we are saying about you? How can I not? I understand very well. And thanks to this understanding, I remain silent. It's your choice whether to insult me or not. But whether to accept your insults or not is my freedom, and I simply refuse them. You can take them back. I do not accept them. At the same time, the old man continued, I cannot forbid you from insulting me. That's your freedom and your right. Let's get out of here, said one of the young men. No one insulted the sage anymore. Can you imagine what will happen to their children? One of the children came up with an idea. Let's give him a good bath, dry him with a hairdryer, and put him in his house in the yard. Since the rabbit was not torn, they did so. The rabbit was put in his house. His head was laid on his paws. It seemed that he was sleeping. And then they heard that the neighbors were returning. The dog's owners rushed into their house and closed the doors. A few minutes later, they heard children screaming, Found! A couple of minutes later, there was a knock on their door. The rabbit's owner stood pale and frightened on the threshold. It seemed as if he had met a ghost. What's happened? What happened to you? Asked the dog's owner. Rabbit, rabbit. Died, and this afternoon he seemed so cheerful. He died on Friday. On Friday? Before we left, the children buried him at the end of the garden. And now he lies in his house again, the dog, who had been searching for his missing childhood friend since Friday, finally found him and dug him up to save him, and he took it to his owners so that they could help. Morality. You should never judge in advance without checking what actually happened. Can you imagine what will happen to their children? One of the children came up with an idea. Let's give him a good bath, dry him with a hairdryer, and put him in his house in the yard. Since the rabbit was not torn, they did so. The rabbit was put in his house. His head was laid on his paws. It seemed that he was sleeping. And then they heard that the neighbors were returning. The dog's owners rushed into their house and closed the doors. A few minutes later, they heard children screaming, Found! A couple of minutes later, there was a knock on their door. The rabbit's owner stood pale and frightened on the threshold. It seemed as if he had met a ghost. What's happened? What happened to you? Asked the dog's owner. Rabbit, 
rabbit. Died, and this afternoon he seemed so cheerful. He died on Friday. On Friday? Before we left, the children buried him at the end of the garden. And now he lies in his house again. The dog, who had been searching for his missing childhood friend since Friday, finally found him and dug him up to save him, and he took it to his owners so that they could help. Morality. You should never judge in advance without checking what actually happened. Parable. We are all eagles. A peasant went into the forest to catch a singing bird but found only an eagle's egg. He brought it home and placed it under one of his hens. Soon an eaglet hatched from the egg and was raised among the chickens. Five years passed and a naturalist came to visit the peasant. Walking past the chicken coop, he noticed, This bird is not a chicken. It is an eagle. I know, said the peasant, but I raised it as a chicken, and now it is no longer an eagle. It has become just like the other chickens, despite its wingspan being one and a half meters. You are mistaken, said the naturalist. It is, and always will be an eagle. It has the heart of an eagle. Someday its heart will make it soar. No, it won't, the peasant insisted. It has turned into a chicken and will never fly like an eagle. Then they argued. The naturalist took the eagle, placed it on his shoulder, and said, You are an eagle and belong to the sky, not the earth. Spread your wings and fly. The eagle shuffled on the naturalist's shoulder, looked around, saw the chickens pecking at grain, and jumped down to them. The peasant laughed. I told you it has turned into a chicken. No, the naturalist insisted. An eagle always remains an eagle. We will conduct another experiment tomorrow. The next day, the naturalist climbed onto the roof of the house with the eagle and repeated, You are an eagle. Spread your wings and fly. Just like the first time, the eagle saw the grain-pecking chickens from the roof and jumped down to them. The peasant smiled. See, I told you it has turned into a chicken. No, the naturalist confidently replied. It is an eagle, and it will always be an eagle. Tomorrow we will conduct the final experiment. Tomorrow it will fly. The next day, the peasant and the naturalist got up very early, took the eagle out of the village, and climbed to the top of a mountain. The sun began to gild the mountain tops. The naturalist lifted the bird and commanded, You are an eagle. You belong to the sky, not the earth. Spread your wings and fly. The eagle looked around, trembling with fear and excitement, but did not take off. Then the naturalist turned it towards the rising sun and dropped it into the abyss. At that moment, the eagle spread its mighty wings and majestically rose into the sky, overcoming its fear. It ascended higher and higher until it disappeared from sight. We are all born eagles. If someone convinces us that we are chickens, we might believe it. But we are born eagles and therefore we must learn to fly. We should not agree to peck at the grains thrown at our feet. A parable about life's expectations. The famous artist painted his last painting. On the day of its presentation, many journalists, photographers, and celebrities gathered to the public. When the time came, the artist removed the cloth covering the painting, which caused an explosion of applause. The painting showed the figure of Jesus carefully knocking on the door of a house. Jesus seemed almost alive. He pressed his ear to the door, as if he wanted to hear if someone inside would answer. Everyone admired the beautiful work of art. One curious visitor found an error in the painting. The door had neither a lock nor a handle. He turned to the artist. But this door seems to be locked from the inside. It has no handle. How can you enter it? It is so, answered the author of the painting. This is the door of a person's heart. It can only open from the inside. Morality. We all expect love, joy, compassion, happiness, success in our lives. But in order for them to appear in our lives, we cannot sit idly by. Action needs to be taken. At least just open the door. Parable. What is more important, happiness or health? Health and happiness once argued about which of them is more important. Happiness says, I am more important. Why? People feel bad without me. They are always looking for me. Everyone just talks about me. Everyone wants to be happy. Everyone also wants to be healthy. Few people talk about health, but everything about happiness. D. 
Do you think that people don't need health? Happiness is more important. A person cannot live without it. Look, there's a boy coming. Let's ask him what is more important to him. Happiness or health? They turn to the boy. Boy, what is more important to you? Happiness or health? Of course, happiness. Without hesitation, the boy answered, You are happy? About. Yes, I'm happy. Here you see. Happiness clapped her hands and jumped for joy. I'm saying that happiness is more important. Tell me, boy, are you healthy? Health asked the next question. Yes, I'm healthy. You are lucky. A woman passing by intervened in the conversation. I would like your health, then I would be happy. Parable about a butterfly. One day, a butterfly pupa fell into the hands of a man. He took her and looked at her for several hours, seeing how she struggled to squeeze her body out of the small hole in the cocoon. Time passed. She kept trying to get out of the cocoon, but there was no progress. It seemed that she was completely exhausted and could no longer do it. Then the man decided to help the butterfly. He took the scissors and cut the cocoon all the way. The butterfly came out of it easily, but its body was somewhat atrophied, small, and its wings were folded and compressed. The man continued to watch her. He expected that at any moment she would open her wings and fly. But that did not happen. Until the end of its days, the butterfly was left with a deformed body and glued wings. She could never spread her wings and fly. The man did not know that the hard cocoon and the incredible efforts made by the butterfly to exit the small hole were necessary for the body to take the correct shape and for forces to enter the wings through the strong body and be ready to fly as soon as it was freed from the cocoon. Morality. Don't help if you don't know how or if you're not sure that your help will really be useful. Don't interfere with the nature of things you didn't create. Otherwise, you might just do some harm. A parable, the freedom of choice, not to respond. There lived a wise man. Everyone loved him. But as always, there was a young man who wanted to test his wisdom. He persuaded his friends to teach the old man a lesson. The sage was sitting near his house, pondering something. Suddenly, young men approached and started taunting and even insulting the man, trying to provoke him. The old man listened to them very calmly. Because of this calmness, they started feeling uneasy. An awkward feeling arose. They were insulting the man, and he was listening to their words as if they were music. Something was wrong. One of them turned to the old man. What's the matter? Don't you understand what we are saying about you? How can I not? I understand very well, and thanks to this understanding, I remain silent. It's your choice whether to insult me or not, but whether to accept your insults or not is my freedom, and I simply refuse them. You can take them back. I do not accept them. At the same time, the old man continued, I cannot forbid you from insulting me. That's your freedom and your right. Let's get out of here, said one of the young men. No one insulted the sage anymore. Boeing Corporation, Seattle. A janitor is mopping the floor in a corridor. Walking down the corridor are very important people. The Vice President of the United States, the Boeing Board of Directors, major shareholders, top engineers, and financial consultants. In a rush, the janitor accidentally hits one of the passers-by with her mop. He recoils and irritably shouts, What are you doing here? The janitor stands up straight, holding the mop vertically like a flag, and proudly says, We are making Boeing airplanes here. Morale. Every person can feel like a member of the team. Everyone in the company can feel like part of a whole and be an advocate, an ambassador of the brand. The corporate culture of a company is a crucial element of management and positioning. My friends, let me tell you a tale of wisdom and wonder that will never fail from ancient lore to modern days these stories will captivate in so many ways listen up come and be enriched in wisdom hear the tales of life Parables and fairy tales Let your imagination unfurl Let your mind unfail As we journey through the stories The lessons prevail